At least once a month, I get an email from somebody who says, I just upgraded from APS-C to full frame and my pictures aren't any better. That's because it's really confusing. What's the difference between a full frame camera and a crop sensor? Oh, I know, APS-C is smaller, lighter, cheaper, right? No. Look, this is APS-C, $2,500. This is full frame, $900. The full frame, smaller, lighter, cheaper. There's so many things that used to be true and they're kind of outdated and myths by now. So we wanna clarify all of this confusing stuff and hopefully never get an email about you being disappointed or wondering if you should switch. We wanna make it easy for you. So here are the facts. Full frame cameras are not necessarily more expensive or bigger or even better. So we need to do some side-by-side -side testing, take you through the common myths and hopefully help you make the best decision for you. And some of you are gonna to wanna to upgrade. The right way to do that is to go to sdp.io slash sell. That takes you to KEH where you can sell your old gear. Use this code and you get a 5% bonus. Then when you go to buy new gear, visit this link and use this code to get a 5% discount. They have a 21 day return period. So if you're not happy for any reason at all, you can return it to KEH. You can't go wrong. You're always making a good choice when you're choosing KEH. So thanks for sponsoring this video. Let's go take some pictures. Okay. For the first test, I want to do what most reviewers do, which is this like very literal thing where they take the same picture with the same lens and the same camera settings on a full frame camera and an APS-C camera to see what the differences are. Step back, we're gonna get the bokeh. We're gonna get the Christmas light bokeh. Can you spot the difference? Yeah, it's really obvious. First, the APS-C camera is very cropped into her face, like way too much. And that's because I use the same lens, but the smaller sensor means you're only capturing the middle of the lens's image circle. For more information about that and all the math behind it, watch this video about crop factor. Okay, you saw both cameras with the same lens, but I don't think that's really fair. So I'm going to get a photo with an APS-C sensor. This is the Fujifilm X-T4 with a 50 millimeter F1. I'll be putting it up against the Sony A7R3 with an 85 millimeter F1.4. They're about the same price and they should produce about the same results, even though they have different apertures. So let's try them out. I'll show you. Say Christmas. Christmas. <laughs> Here are the results. Let's just do a blind test for a second. Look at them both. Can you tell the difference? Which one is full frame? Which one is the APS-C sensor? A lot of people can't tell. Here's the answer. So you can see that even with the cropped sensor, you can get similar results if you use a larger aperture like F1 versus F1.4. Here's how the math works. The Fuji camera has a crop factor of 1.5. We multiply both the focal length and aperture by the crop factor so we know the lens produces results equivalent to a 75 millimeter f1.5 lens. That's pretty close to our full frame 85 f1.4, which is why the two photos looked so similar. But you can't always get an equivalent aperture. I have to bend way down. So let's take this into low light and we'll try to get the best results we can with a wide angle zoom. Okay, you didn't have to diss me that hard. The standard set of zoom lenses that every professional buys, they're so important, they call them the holy trinity of lenses. 16 to 35, 24 to 70, 70 to 200, F to eight. Equivalent zooms for Fuji, Sony, APS-C, just about every APS-C system exists, but they're also F to eight. Not equivalent F to eight, but physical F to eight. And I'm gonna show you how that compares against the standard zoom on a full frame camera. I've got the A7R three again, and I'm putting it up against this time the Fuji X-H2. See how they do? I've got my shutter locked in at 1 200th. Side by side, you can see the difference. The full frame image is a lot cleaner in low light, and that's with the fastest standard zooms that you can buy. Now, there are other ways you could mitigate that. You could use longer shutter speeds, and sometimes systems with smaller sensors have better stabilization systems, but if you need to cancel out motion, you can't do that. You could also add a light. You could add light, you could add flash, but this is a big part of the reason why so many pros, especially like wedding professionals, shooting receptions in low light, still rely on the holy trinity on full frame cameras. If Fuji would give me F1.8 zooms, then you could get truly equivalent results for those things. But today those don't exist and those don't exist for micro four thirds or just about any system except for full frame. 
I just want to point out you should also consider if you even care if you're not shooting like a wedding reception or restaurants, places with low light. Another place with somewhat low light might be like an indoor basketball game or an indoor soccer game. They're not always really well lit. If not, then it's not a big deal if you're always going to be using a strobe or a flash or choosing when you're taking photos. Sometimes good enough is good, good enough for people. There is an alternative and that is a speed booster. With APS-C mirrorless cameras, you can put on a speed booster and DSLR full frame lenses and you will get full frame results, including low light capabilities. And they have speed boosters that autofocus. There's a wide variety of speed boosters, but sometimes they reduce image quality. Sometimes they add flaring and you do have that extra adapter. So it's not perfect, but it's a great workaround. Here's my APS-C camera. This Metabone speed booster focuses the light from the full frame lens down to the size of an APS-C sensor. I'll attach it to the camera. This is a full frame 24 to 70 f2.8 lens. I'll attach this over the speed booster. Now I can dial the aperture down to a seemingly impossible f2.0. Retaking those low light photos with the full frame lens and the speed booster, we can see Lightroom shows ISO 6400 and f2 instead of ISO 12800 and f2.8. Zooming in, we can see the APS-C sensor now has about the same amount of noise as the full frame sensor. That speed booster fixed all our problems. While fast lenses have the potential to produce equivalent results with smaller sensors, there are some areas where bigger sensors are simply better, such as dynamic range and optimal image quality. Here's a classic landscape type photo shooting into the sun, which landscape photographers do at sunrise and sunset and many portrait photographers do. These are raw files, so let's increase the exposure so we can peer into the shadows. It's pretty amazing the amount of detail that you can save, right? But as we zoom into the heavily recovered shadows, we can see the full frame sensor produces a much cleaner, more detailed image. With a smaller sensor, you can overcome this by bracketing your shots and combining them using HDR techniques in Lightroom. But that's only helpful for still subjects such as landscapes, for moving subjects such as wedding receptions where you need to recover the shadows in a dark tuxedo, the full frame camera is still the better choice. Another area big sensors win is optimal image quality. This is ISO 100 of a blue sky, and you can see the APS-C sensor shows significantly more noise than the full frame sensor does. Now you'll hear many reviewers say there is no noise at the base ISO, but that is simply not true. There is always noise, especially in primary colors such as red, blue, and green. This would be easy to remove, but still, it's nice to have a clean image straight out of the camera. There is an area where smaller sensors excel, and that's wildlife. So let's go outside. To test wildlife, I've got my Canon R7 and APS-C camera, and my Canon R6 Mark II, a full-frame camera. I've got Canon's best wildlife lens, the 600mm f4, and I'm going to see which of those two bodies gets me the best results. The less expensive APS-C camera produced clearly better results. So big win for wildlife, right? Well, kind of. The full frame body I chose is only 24 megapixels. If I had chosen a high megapixel body, like a Canon R5, the results would have been a lot more similar. See, APS-C has the advantage of having higher pixel density. More pixels are crammed into the middle of the frame. And the thing about wildlife is you almost always end up cropping because those birds are not my friend. They do not want to get close to me. That is not a problem for portrait photography where I can just get as close as I want and fill the frame. Here you always end up cropping. Besides choosing a full frame body with more megapixels, I also could have just put a teleconverter on it. Like a 1.4 teleconverter gets me almost the same additional reach as my APS-C Canon R7 would, making more out of these pixels. Full frame does have an advantage for wildlife, especially if you choose a high megapixel body, because you have a wider angle of view. So even if you end up cropping later, it's so much easier to track a fast moving flying bird when you have a full frame camera, as opposed to having that permanent 1.6 times crop for Canon cameras. It's just harder to find birds in the frame. So for a budget, the less expensive APS-C cameras are definitely the choice for wildlife. But if you have an unlimited budget, get a full frame, high megapixel body and throw in a teleconverter when you really do need that extra reach. Let's go back to the studio and wrap this up. So which is it? Should people upgrade? I mean, I just tell people it's up to you what you want. And if you are willing to invest in a full frame camera and the lenses, which is very important, and you want a shallower depth of field, better bokeh, better low light capability, 
full frame might be for you. But I don't want to see you shooting with an APS-C camera with f2.8 zooms and then upgrading to a full frame camera with f4 zooms. You're, you're just not, you just wasted <laughs> your money. That's what I don't want. I also don't want people to buy um, an APS-C camera and not realize that the camera they chose might not have a lot of lenses to go with it. Always consider the lens lineup available to you when choosing a camera body so that you can get everything you need. Right now, it's Fuji and Sony that have the best lineup of APS-C lenses, especially like those encroaching upon like true professional full frame results. No matter what you decide to do, KEH is the right place to do it. Sell them your old gear using this link and this bonus code and you'll get 5% extra. They make it easy. There's no risk of somebody stealing your gear and shipping it overseas and never paying you, which has happened to us Many several times. times. And buy used gear from KEH too. They inspect everything, they repair it for you, they give you a warranty and a guarantee. Hit this link and give them this coupon code to let them know that we sent you. Thanks, KEH, and thanks all of you. I hope this helped you choose a better camera for you. But if you have questions still, leave them in the comments down below. And thanks so much for watching. Bye.